Well, as I sit here now, it's uh, playing on my mind that it's coming to that time of year that some of us love and some of us seem to dread. Uh, and since being with PB, it's certainly become a time I do love, uh, and that's respooling time. So what I want to do very quickly is sort of talk about the line of choice um, that I've been using for the last 18 months. But not only that, talk about how I respool. Now, it seems like a very boring subject, and I'm sure there's loads of videos about it. However, there are a lot of, in my opinion, misconceptions about what to do, how to do it. And people get stressed about it. I get, you know, a few of my pals ask me, how do you do it? How do you? And to me, it's, it couldn't be a simpler system, really. Um, so the line of choice for me, PB Control Mono. Now, I've dabbled with the 28, but I found myself in the last sort of re-spool, I've changed over to the 24 pound. Why? I don't know. Um, but all I can say about all of the PB control lines is they are incredibly strong, super supple, cast like a dream, and I've got to be honest, um, I've never had a problem with them. Uh, and that, for me, for anyone that knows me, knows I am a bit of a line fetishist, and I do, I've, I have in the past spooled up, cast out two or three times, and completely despooled reels because it didn't work for me. But since using the control, confidence in line to me, line and hooks and your bait. Um, and people don't always consider line, but if that line is flawed, you're gonna have problems. But that control with its strength, it's not strength, it's durability, and the way it just flies off of a spool is absolutely phenomenal. So if you are looking for a line, look no further really for me than that PB control. And then pick your poundage if you want extreme distance, it may sound crazy, but that 18 pound absolutely flies off. But for the balance of strength uh, and power and, and cast ability, 24 to 28, or if you're Mark Holmes, the 30 pound plus is an absolute tow rope for short range in weedy conditions. Right now, on to spooling up. Now, as I said, to me, I've heard so many misconceptions about putting it in warm water, putting it in cold water, leaving it soak overnight, blah, blah, blah. Now, for me, to be honest, nowadays, the line making process has changed a lot of the, the concerns, if you like, about what we have to do with our line. Some come with some sort of polymer coatings on them and other bits and pieces. And that's what that warm water used to do is to get rid of some of those uh, oils and greases that are in the fishing, which uh, in the process of manufacturing, which can cause a line to float. Now, for me, since using that control mono, I've never had any problems with this. So for me, simply, um, I just chuck it in a sink sort of 20 minutes before and that's for no other reason other to get a little bit of moisture onto it and to sort of get it into the spool so it comes off the spool a lot easier and onto my reel that is it is not to do anything else with getting line absorbed water absorbed into the line or, or anything like that so whether you chuck it into the sink or chuck it into the margins if you're on the bank to re-spool irrelevant um, you could do it straight away but I just leave it in there for sort of 20 minutes just sort of a mental thing more than anything else but you know, straight in and ready to go. It doesn't need overnight soaking whatsoever. Now on my spools, what I have done in the past is uh, spooled up with some cheap backing line, if you like, all the way to the lip. And then I've wrapped over the wrapping sticks and taken off 250 uh, yards of line. Now, why 250? I do not know. I have never fished further than 200 yards in my life. So that's never been a concern. Um, but what that allows me to do is when I put the new line on, I know that I've got 250 meters of line from lip back down to that backing knot. And for me, that means that however many times I re-spool or redo my lines, that 250 meters, that 250 yards, pardon me, will never ever change. Now, some reels come with packers where you can pack them onto the, around the spool um, and then that will change the depth of line. But for me, I didn't have them on my reels. It's an old fashioned way. Spool it all the way with cheap line. I think it cost me a tenner for three spools worth to back it up. Then do the wrapping sticks, knock all that line back off, and then start with that knot. And every time that I re-spool from that knot to the lip, I know I'm getting 250 meters. So as I said, with this, there are many people that are worried about tension and line and, and how it goes onto the spool. Now, for me, what I found in the times I have re-spooled with a control, if you put the label up in the water, that means the coils will always come up and through the eye straight. Now, what do I mean by that? So when you put your butt section of your rod, which you all should do, put your reel onto the butt section of the rod, feed the line through the butt ring, knot it on underneath the bail arm, close the bail arm. 
When you start cranking down on that reel, what you want to do is watch that the spool, the line comes off, the coils come up through that butt ring and onto the line. And when you stop and look through the butt ring down to the butt section of the rod, it's all in a straight line. If you have any twists or loops in that line there, all you are doing is twisting it back onto the spool the wrong way. If you do find that that's twisted, oh, pardon me, if you do find that's twisted, simply flip the spool over, put two or three more turns onto the reel and see if that comes on straight. But as I said, 99 times out of 100 on the control, label up will mean that it comes through and in a straight line. Now, regards tension. Yes, you do need some tension. Now, I know people that wind it through telephone books, through gloves, through other mitts, through loads of different things. Um, but I have simply found <laughs> that if you get a sock on your hand and pinch between the blank and the line and pinch it onto the sock and crank, that is the perfect amount of tension. You do not need to be putting it through pulley systems and through yellow pages and, and all sorts. Just enough sort of hand tension. Now, as I crank, I try to keep a straight and constant flow of foot. Now, these are things that I don't know whether they affect the line lay or what, but all I know is what I do. And by just keeping a constant, trying to spool up under a mile an hour or cranking it one at a time in jolted movements, a slow and constant steady reel seems to work for me. Yet again, always checking, coil up through and onto the reel. Now, for me, uh, and I've dealt with some, some great anglers in my time and, and casting geniuses and someone like Mike Dagner will tell you that you want that line to butt all the way up to where the sort of angle of the spool starts. A lot of people will be tempted to get all the way flush. What that'll do is cause you to have wind knots, over spooling, It'll, the line shoots off too fast, it can't be controlled and that's where you end up with wind knots and fraps. So if you look on all spools, they've got a little chamfer, a little angle, and just at the bottom of that angle, or maybe a wrap onto that chamfer, is the perfect depth of line. And what that allows to do is as the line under tension of the lead shoots off, it actually conicals off that and straight. And what that means is that will give you the best shooting line lay, if you like. So for me, as I said, there's a lot of misconceptions about spooning up line. To me, as long as it's done under tension, and that those coils of line go straight from the spool through the butt ring and onto that spool, you're not gonna have any problems. So it is that time of year, get re-spooling, but for me, if you're looking for a strong line that casts phenomenally well and will never let you down, that PB control in 24 or 28 or any poundage that you choose is my go-to line and should certainly be something you look at this spring.